Hey folks, how you doing? You know, there's something that people, all people, think about from time to time. <laughs> and, uh, and there's an answer for it, you know, what they're thinking about. They think about what it's going to be like in the next life or if there's going to be a next life, you know. Some people say, well, when you die, it's all over. There's no coming back. You're finished. Okay. But then there's those people, like I say, who think about the next life. Evidently, they believe that <clears throat> we're coming back. Okay? Some people believe that. And so, uh, we say, well, how? how? How do we know? What's telling us about this? You know? Well, the mythology is telling us about this. You know? So, we uh, well, just how do we get there, you know? And is there a way to know this in this life? Yeah, it is, you know. So we'll go back now to the the bar and the car, okay? And uh, we see that the bar a spirit comes and hovers around the person. But he leaves. He doesn't stay. Because the person's not ready to receive the bar. He's like not purified, let's say. The person or his car. Car's spirit in the person. He's made when the person is made, you know. But anyway, the bomb leaves. It goes off. Somebody says, well, where does it go? See, the bar goes to a distant place, a distant land. It goes home. Where's that at? You know? Well, it's where we're going to go when we die. Well, our body goes to the grave. But that spirit of ours, uh, connected with the bar, when the bar comes in, we go. We go together. Where we go to that distant land. That's where the bar's at. It comes here and checks on a human. It flies around, you know. And it will do that until the human uh, reconciles all opposition within. When there is no more stress, pain, suffering, and all that, which the human can accomplish in this life. When he becomes, let's say, when he develops an impersonal personality, things just won't bother him. And his deception will become so great, so keen, that he will see events, you know, before they happen, and at least those involving him. He'll know not to go here or there or there because there will be trouble for him there. No, don't go. He will know this because he has acquired that keen sense of perception, that super perception, when it becomes impersonal. Mm -hmm. but this is what the bar is waiting for, you see. So now, as we know, the dead bodies up there in the graveyard are going to stay there. Okay? But now, if the person ever gets himself together, you know what I mean, and pur like purifies himself, the bar will come and will descend on that person and will stay with that person until his physical body dies. The physical body then goes to the grave, and then that spirit that people have said that they have seen rising from the dead body, or people have said that, it will rise. It will, my people, most people don't see it. Few people might see it. But anyway, it is the car and the bar have united. 
Well, that's what the bar kept coming back for. They wanted to unite with the car. Okay? And, and they could will in this life. Okay? And if it doesn't happen in this life while he's alive, well, when the body dies and goes to the grave, then all, recon uh, all opposition is reconciled. The car gets with the bar, and they, they go to that distant place where, where the bar been going to all along, that distant land. You see? And a, a person who is reconciled in this life, he will know it. He will see it. Because the bar will have come and descended upon him. Him and his car. And not only that, he can leave the body while he's alive and go and co visit that land and come back. You see? And when he dies, like I said, his body goes to the grave, the car and the bar together, we call it the spirit, the soul, whatever you want to call it, they will go to that distant land and that person will be born again. Now, the, the ingredients are there at this point. The body's here, though. It's not an ingredient. You good. Get another body, okay? But according to our uh, Kimai scripture, the God Ta creates on his potter's wheel the human, the baby, and his car. And so the car stays with the person in this life, okay? And so, when we go to the next, next world, the car and the, and, the, and the bar will be there, okay? And the person will take on, or you become a baby, just like here. He, he's born a child, he's in the womb. Now, when he's in the womb, The baby is in the womb. <laughs> there is the bar and the car with him. Remember, the car is made when the, when the baby's made. And the mythology just tells us it happens on the potter's wheel, which has to do with our solar system. It has something to do with the, the human being, the way we turned out. But anyway, uh, but when the baby is born into the world, Okay, the bar leaves, and it's just a child in his car to go through this life. And the child comes in contact with so much negativity in his life, it makes him impure. And he's got to go through a purification process. Oh, I'll just wait till he die, and he automatically becomes pure because there's no opposition in him then, you know. So this is where it goes, and it happens over and over again throughout the eons. It's eternal, you see. So this is what goes on uh, with the human in terms of the next life. There is no hell for any of us. Except the hell do we go for, through in this life? You see what I mean? There's no hell. You go through hell here in this life until you can get yourself together and purify yourself and develop an impersonal personality. And then all that emotional stuff won't bother you. It'll be a thing of the past, okay, once you're capable of doing that. You know what I mean? So, it is heaven that waits to receive you. That is that next life. Not hell. People don't need to hear anything about eternal brimstone and fire because it creates stress, especially in children and adults too. They don't need to hear that stuff. And brimstone and fire and stuff. People be shouting to the top of their voices, preaching. And that's stressful too, even to the preacher, whether he knows it or not. Uh, poor fellow. But uh, anyway, that's the story. You know what I mean? And uh, 
uh, this, the, these, this stuff about the bar and the car, it tells us that the human is missing out on a lot in this life. You see, and uh, he can straighten all that out. You know, people say, you know what people say? They say, well, how come those spaceships, those flying saucers don't come and make contact with us and be friends with us? You know what I mean? Hey, people believe they're here. They probably are here. You know what I mean? People have been seeing them for thousands of years. But wait a minute. Why don't they come and make friends with us? The same reason why the bar, don't, the bar doesn't come and descend on a person who needs to they need purification, but the humans do. So when the spaceships come, you know, and people say, hey, the spaceships up here, the government, what do you do? The government sends fighter planes up there. Is that a welcoming party? A bomb, planes with bombs and missiles and guns? So they say, the pilots say, yeah, uh, the, uh, the spaceships, the foreign alien ships came and then they, wow, they, made, <laughs> they turned to the right angle and bam, vanished. I don't blame them. You're coming at them with guns and bombs. And so this is analogous to the human being who has not purified himself. The bar comes, hoovers around, and it leaves too. Just like the alien spaceships leave. So there's a relationship between what's going on here. You can call it an analogy between what's going on with the spaceships and why they don't make friends with us and what happens with the bar, where it, where it don't come and land on us, you know what I mean, and be our friend. Okay, folks, thank you very much, and I'll get back with another one. And this analogy, you know what I mean, we'll talk about it. Okay, folks, have, have a good time, and uh, enjoy yourself, and subscribe. Bye. <laughs>